Okay, hello everyone. Welcome back to another video. Um, I know that a lot of what's trending right now, and at least on GitHub, is um, these sort of task-driven autonomous agents projects like AutoGPT and Baby AGI, which are very cool, and I intend to make videos on those and try them out. Um, but I want to talk about this one project that's sort of gone under the radar called Cataclysm. And it's really blown my mind. It's like a code generation project um, where the gist of it is basically you install it and you import it. And then with this consume function, you basically pass in the Python like interpreter globals. And the thing is now in control. And so you sort of like write functions. And if they don't exist, if you're a little bit descriptive, the thing just makes them up. And they work and it's really amazing so i'm going to go to the getting started notebook and there's a youtube intro youtube video for this project which i will link um, but let's just go a little bit through the notebook and i won't go too far and then i'll run my own example um that really kind of blew me away and it's simple but it's really cool so you're going to um install cataclysm as i said initialize it and then uh, make sure you have an open ai key in an environment file and all the instructions are here so you can follow that and then um, it's kind of funny that the project is called Cataclysm and there's a whole sort of ominous theme behind um, these docs and the video where, you know, it's sort of like the end of how at least software is written now, I think, or the beginning of the end. Um, and I totally agree with that and I'll, I'll demonstrate my own example in a second. But I think the workflows that are going to come from this are just mind-blowing um, and this is just the beginning. So let's just go through an example here. Um, the person who created this project, or at least in the docs here, they created a graph, uh, a dictionary that represents a graph, right? Vertices, um, edges, nodes, etc. And they're using, um, actually, they're not using anything. They're just using Python. But they basically created a function that doesn't exist that uh, sort of references Dijkstra, a, a graph sort of pathfinding algorithm, right? And this thing is going to create, Cataclysm is going to create this function as it goes okay this doesn't exist anywhere this hasn't been created so creates a variable shortest path find shortest path Dijkstra as you're writing your code you're sort of inventing imagining functionality as you go and using Python and all the libraries around it um, so you create find shortest path Dijkstra pass in the graph that was previously created pass in a couple um, the I guess the two nodes you want to find paths between and then find the shortest path right and the thing just does it, finds the shortest path. And then if you call it, this is very cool, it gets cached. So this function is not going to be recreated again. It's it's cached. And this takes a little bit because OpenAI has to sort of generate it. But um, that's really amazing, okay, in my opinion. And I'm going to go, let's go to my example now, and then I'll go over some of the other functionality, which is tangential but very similar. So oh, one more time, he just sort of... Uh, the, the program invented the functionality of this function and you can go and take a look at the code that it creates. So let's go and I have this notebook called Ruin. So as you can see I've imported Cataclysm, consumed the globals, um, Python globals, and then what I just wanted to do to test this out was create um, a sort of pandas data frame. If you're familiar with Python and pandas it's a uh, a table, if you will, just you can think of it as a table with columns and rows. And I want the columns to be name and country and 30 records. So I'm passing in sort of keyword arguments to represent the parameters and arguments to the function. And the name of the function is very sort of explicit. I'm not sure if that's necessary, but I was just messing around with this and trying to get it to work. And then, um, again, I, these functions don't exist, which is what's really crazy to me. Then I just have it create a dictionary called frequency count. I'm sorry, country frequencies dictionary. And I use a frequency count function. Again, made up, pass in arguments that I want it um, to accept. And then plot bar chart frequency by country is another function that doesn't exist. That's going to make a bar graph of the frequencies of the countries. Okay, so there's three things that this is going to do. It's going to generate fake data of names and countries that those people live in. It's going to find the, the frequency distribution of each country, and then it's going to create a bar chart. Now, keep in mind, I know a little bit of pandas, uh, matplotlib, the charting library, um, and a whole bunch of other libraries, but I'm not an expert in a lot of them. And you know, I don't want to necessarily remember the syntax to do all of that. So just as you go, you can have the thing sort of build your uh, – uh, a world that doesn't exist, which I think, you know, and maybe I'm hyperbolizing that a bit. Maybe I'm just too excited, but I think it's very cool. 
and again, this should run pretty quickly because I've already created these, um, but usually it'll take about a minute or something. So let's see. Okay, there you go. So look at this. Um, I didn't have to, okay, again, this is fake data. So I am using Faker and you have to have some context. You need to have the libraries installed. So, so Cataclysm and Python know which libraries to use. Um, so I have Faker and Matplotlib and Pandas installed. And if we go back to the original, well, let's take a look at the sample DF that it created, for example. And you'll see that's a data frame, right? It's got all the countries, the names and the countries. What? Okay, I didn't have to explicitly, I sort of just said, do this. I didn't have to like write the code to do this, which you can sort of do in, you know, with ChatGPT or whatever, but you got to copy paste it. And this has context of your whole Python environment, right? Um, and again, it, it's, it has all this code and this, it's execable, but if you want to go look at what it's doing, you can find it in the, in, in one of the folders in the project. And this is what it's doing, importing matplotlib and creates the chart. And this is the, just the function for the creating the chart, but all these other functions, frequency count, create pandas DF records with faker data. Those are all available now. Let's go look at some more really cool examples. That was just my simple example. Um, Let's see, oh, okay, so this is, um, this one was very cool, where I'm assuming the Wikipedia package is installed here, and it's, he's telling it to get italicized phrases from Wikipedia, he passes in a page, and return the lower cases, only lowercase words, and then f basically find the italicized phrases on a Wikipedia page. Without having to use the Wikipedia package, without having to scrape, it's, it's crazy, right? I mean, that's really, really cool to me. Um, let me know what you guys think. From Cataclysm, import Doom. Okay, let's talk about Doom where if you don't really want to let the thing, because the thing sort of is in control now, right? If you don't want that to happen, you can explicitly call it here. Uh, you can call a function by uh, prepending it with Doom and sort of use it more, uh, you know, carefully, right? And then um, impending is another uh, sort of functionality right here, doom.impending, where you can sort of, um, as I understand it, preview what's going to happen before it actually runs. Now, I really encourage you to go check this out. The examples are amazing. There is a, an example of a um, hangman game. Okay, let's go over to the top here and try to find the um, hangman example. Is it here? Oh, here was the notebook. Okay, hangman, cataclysm, examples, hangman. And as you can see, there is a lot of stuff going on, but none of it is like sort of code that this dev has written, right? It's just uh, Cataclysm writing the code. So he's just got the function names and some descriptions and the thing uses all the context around. And uh, let me go to the uh, GitHub repo, where is it? Okay, to the prompt where if I'm not mistaken, a lot of this stuff is used um, when it's time to actually build. So it uses the suggested function name, arguments, the stack trace, all the modules, um, all and all of the generated code. So basically, it uses a lot of context to do this, which is awesome. And again, I'm gonna go back to that example. Sorry for jumping around. This is very exciting to me. He, he built this hangman game where he just says, you know, cataclysm, randomly select a word for the game. Don't need a, uh, you know, it would be pr pretty trivial, but you don't need an algorithm to select a word, get hangman complex words list. You know, if a word creates the functionality for if the word is guessed. Uh, and the coolest part to me is that the ASCII art is created. So you don't have to write ASCII art, okay? Um, let me go to my terminal here, pull this up, and I'm just gonna do uh, Python hangman. Whoops, let's see. Okay, so I've got an ASCII art hangman game going. Let's see if I can guess the word E. There's no E, A. You know, we could add functionality to this to show the current um, letters that don't exist in the game. But if you're familiar with hangman, basically we're trying to guess a word here. Um, anyway, I'm just gonna finish it. Oh, I've already guessed that. R, T, B, I. Well, I'm not really good at hangman. I lost. Okay, so it created a full hangman game. I just had to sort of tell it sort of what I wanted. Um, and okay, anyway, I'm gonna stop it there be because I'm getting a little too excited and I wanna go play with this some more. But I just sort of wanted to give a glimpse into where I think we're going with generative, uh, with generative 
anything, you know, lang language models in general, but code sort of dev workflows too, where you're sort of building a program as you go and leveraging all of the functionality of libraries that already exist to um, not, in, not in natural language, but in code, sort of tell it what to use, um, et cetera, et cetera. And, it, and I think this is a little bit different than maybe uh, using ChatGBT and sort of copy pasting the outputs or whatever. It might be like the plugins that are coming. There might be something very similar to this. But imagine there's like a library that doesn't exist yet, right? And GPT-4 doesn't know about it and you sort of write it and it's, it's, it, you can install it or you have it in your environment and you, you want the thing to use it to, to generate your programs, right? So I think this is sort of a pivotal moment, moment in sort of software dev and it's still very early, but it's very exciting to see where this is heading. Anyway, all right, um, let me know what you guys thought. I'm sorry if I was a little all over the place there. This is very cool to me. I've, I've said that so many times. Um, all right, thank you guys for watching. Um, give it a shot. Let me know if you have any questions. Um, follow me on Twitter at Tyler What's Good underscore, and I will see you guys in the next one.